In a dream, author Janet Williams received what she believes is a message from her father after his passing. But his message did not end there. Just uh, about a week before he passed away, I gave him a card and in the card I said, Dad, when you die, I want you to send me a message. And I said, and I gave him uh, some creative ways to do that. Will it be a number? Will it be an animal? Will it be, and I, you know, will it be a special message of, through a person? Will it be a dream? And so I gave him the card and he spent time with it and then he was to put it in the envelope and seal it. I was not to see what he wrote and he was not to tell me. I was in Sault Ste. Marie. We had dealt with the ashes. It was a year later and I was driving home. I was by myself. I saw on a branch an eagle. Now my dad was a birder and he loved um, peregrine falcons and he loved eagles and if you saw an eagle that was the best kind of bird you could ever see. Right, right. And it was looking at me watching my car and so I slowed down and pulled off to the side and I rolled the window down and I looked at it and I, I was just in awe and amazement. So when I opened that card and, and you know I waited for that one year period and I opened the card uh, he had put, a bird will tell you that it loves you. And so I felt, wow, there you go. I've got, I've got some confirmation. It's not much, but uh, you know, when you're- I really, think that's huge. Yeah. <laughs> but you take what you can and, and you just savor the, the feeling. And I've, it was actually how I felt. I think that's most important. I felt like there was that connection there. Now, if that doesn't bring a tear to your eye, I don't know what will. Was that a final message from a loving father? I find it hard to write it off as a coincidence because I had a similar experience myself. Following the passing of a very, very dear friend of mine, she, um, she had leukemia, so she was sick for a long time. And when she passed, I started having these nightmares about her. Okay. And it would, I mean, wake up screaming kind of nightmares, which were very, very bad. And then one night, I had a dream about her in her house and she was walking me through her house. She was in this beautiful, long, white nightgown. And she said to me, I love you. How could you ever be afraid of me? And then she turned and disappeared into this mist. And after that, no more nightmares. Wow. And I've always, always, I mean, as much as I'm a skeptic about the supernatural, I've always believed that was her. I would agree with you on that. Um, I also think that nightmares are not bad. I think in our culture, again, uh, especially because we're sleep deprived, <laughs> yeah. when you're not sleeping enough, it's hard to get in time to even dream. I think in our culture, we've got so much coming at us that nightmares are actually a wake up call, literally, to say, listen, I have something to show you, whether it's your subconscious, your conscious, your unconscious, or someone from the spirit world saying, I've got something really important to share with you. Please wake up to the fact that I'm trying to get through a message to you. Mm -hmm. And so when people share with me in, in, in dream circles that I do, you know, that um, they have this nightmare and it's really scary and they don't even want to analyze the dream because they're so afraid of it, uh, I, I encourage them to do that because I say there's a message in here that's really important and once you face it, the nightmare part will go away, the fear part will go away and you'll actually get the gift out of it mm -hmm. and receive it like you did. Right, right. You mentioned at level three you see a lot of archetypes and symbolism. What are some of the most common symbols and what do they represent? The symbols that are very common uh, across the board are the house and a house represents the person and generally the house will be the one that you grew up in so from my perspective even though I've been living in Mississauga now for well over a decade I never dream about this house. I never dream about where I live. I always dream about my home Your childhood and my home. childhood home. When I do my dream course, I talk about the fact that there are lots of dream dictionaries. And in the ancient times, the Greeks and the Romans, they would incubate dreams and they would go into a temple and they would fast and they would eat certain, you know, foods to induce a dreams. And then once they finally had a dream, then it would go before the, the council and the council would interpret it. And so if you dreamt about a vase, it would mean something. If you dreamt about an animal, and it would mean something. And they used it as predictions, and they too. Used, yes, yeah. exactly. And a lot of cultures have that. But really, from a dream dictionary point of view, I believe that it's really important for people to make their own dream dictionary. So one of the activities that we do in my course is identify the common symbols 
and then uh, dissect them from your own perspective, what does that mean in your world and realm? Now, if you had a terrible, terrible experience with a cat, maybe it means something bad to you. Mm -hmm. If you're super, super uh, stitious, then it could mean something bad to you also. But if you're in touch with animals and you think they're wonderful and you feel that the cat has intuition and has that intuitive sense. And historically, guardians of the underworld. Oh, very good, yes. Yep. So yeah. there could be something. This could be something there. Yeah. Coming up on Ghosts of Mississauga, our dreams flashes from our past lives. You know, we manifest what we need to manifest in the dreams so that we can deal with what we need to deal with.